And finally, the third chapter is about Steiner triple systems. Steiner triple systems are a set of n vertices and edges consisting of three vertices each, in such a way that every pair of vertices is in exactly one edge. So the number of edges is n and minus 1 over 6, and the only ends that work are in the form 6k plus 1 and 6k plus 3. These are the two smallest examples for each case, uh, n equals 7 and n equals 9. And the thing that we're going to be interested in about the standard triple systems is to look for packings in them. So a packing is a subset of the edges, such that no two edges overlap in any vertex. So for example, at n equals 9 over there, if you look at the first three lines, the edges are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, 7, 8. So that makes a packing. Not only that, it's a packing that uses all of the vertices, so we call that a perfect packing. Now, in the case of 6k plus 1, the perfect packings are going to have to be defined as the packings that use all but one vertex because it's just not divisible by 3. However, n equals 7 doesn't have a perfect packing. Look at this. Any edge that you choose, say the first one, is 0, 1, 3. So all of the other edges have either a 0, a 1, or a 3. So the biggest packing that you can make in the STS with 7 vertices is just to take one edge. That is not a perfect packing, it leaves four vertices outside. But I believe that that is an exception and that for other ends we can find perfect packings. I'm going to show you some uh, numbers that point in that direction, but that's all I have. Uh, there is no proof. What there is a proof of is that you can find packings that leave somewhere around that number of vertices unpacked. So the square root of n log n to the 3 halves. So you can find packings around that size. And one way that you can find them is just by using the following simple algorithm. Choose a, an edge at random and pack it. Now choose another edge. If it doesn't overlap anything that was already packed, then you pack that. If there is an overlap, then you can't pack it. You just discard it and look at the next edge. So you're going to look at all the edges in some random order and just pack them whenever possible. Uh, and that's called the random greedy algorithm. So I ran it for several different ends and this is a list of the average number of edges that remained. And the distribution, I don't remember which number gave this picture, but they all look kind of the same. And the average number of edges of vertices that get up that the, the, the average number of vertices that don't get packed really is around uh, that number that I said, square root of n, log n to the 3 halves. But you can do something better than that. So here's what I did at the end of this algorithm. After you found that um, packing random greedy and uh, there are a bunch of vertices that were not packed. So now I'm going to have, I'm going to try to change the packing a little bit, piece by piece, to make it better. So, consider an example where there are seven vertices that were not packed, and everybody else is packed. So if you look at these first two vertices, because this is a Steiner triple system, they have a third vertex that make an edge with it. And that third vertex is not one of the ones that haven't been packed yet, because if it was, then the packing would not be then the random greedy algorithm would not be finished yet. So here's the third vertex, it's outside, and it's packed with some other vertices. So I'm giving everybody names now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip these edges. So I'm going to unpack this 8, 9, 10 edge and pack the 1, 2, 8 edge. So that doesn't make anything worse. The number of vertices that are outside of the packing did not get bigger. So the worst that can happen is nothing. But maybe something better than that can happen. Maybe 3, 4, 10 is an edge. Right? So 3 and 4 is a pair that has a third that makes an edge. So there is a chance that that third is the 10. Why not? And if that happens, then you can pack that edge now and you're only left with 9, 5, 6, and 7. So now you have four vertices outside of the packing instead of seven. That's better. And you can keep doing that. Maybe 
I can flip this 9, 5, 11 edge with the 12, 13, 11. And, you know, maybe 6, 7, and 12 is an edge. Maybe 6, 7, and 13 is an edge. So you have two chances of this thing um, packing another edge, and then you're only going to have one vertex left, which is a perfect packing. So, in, in the simulations, that actually happens. That sometimes takes longer and sometimes uh, takes shorter time, but, uh, but it's been happening in all of the examples that I tried. So, this picture is for the 6K plus 1 case because you have 7 vertices left. What about the 6K plus 3? So, this would be the last step when you have 3 vertices left. So, and they are not an edge because otherwise we will be done. But, so take this edge 1, 2, 4 and flip it with the edge 4, 5, 6. Uh, so what would have to happen in order for us to get to the perfect packet from here? We need 5, 6, 3 to be an edge. Except that 5, 6, 3 cannot be an edge because 5, 6, 4 is an edge. And the pair 5, 6 can only be in one edge. So this case is essentially different from this one because here, maybe 6, 7, 12, 6, 7, 13 are edges and maybe they're not, but there is a chance that they could be. There is nothing that prevents it. And here it's impossible. So, but still, I do find packings by this algorithm in, um, in the case 6k plus 3. How can that happen? Well, it has to come from the previous step, when we have six vertices outside of the packing. So maybe we change the edge 1 to 7 with the edge 7, 8, 9. So now the unpacked vertices are 8, 9, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now two things have to happen at the same time. You have to have two edges here at the same time. So it's maybe going to be 3, 4, 8 and 5, 6, 9. If they're both edges at the same time, then you pack them both and you get zero vertices left and that is a perfect packing. So that is very good and that does happen sometimes, but it's uh, harder because here the chance of one of these things happening is 2 over n because 6 and 7 have n possibilities for the third and two of them are good, so it's 2 over n. But here it's more like 1 over n squared because we need the third of the 3, 4 pair to be a specific thing and at the same time the third for the pair 5, 6 has to be a specific thing. So it's harder to happen. What does happen more often than that is that one of them is an edge and the other is not. So if we pack that edge and so say 3, 4, 8 was an edge and then 5, 6, 9 remains but it's not an edge. That is the bad case. That is what we don't want because now we're stuck there. There's nowhere to go. So, you know, what we do then is we choose uh, randomly another edge that is packed, say 10, 11, 12. We unpack it and then we keep doing this and we hope that at some point both things are going to happen at the same time. And again, this is what happens. Uh, we expect this to take more time than the 6k plus 1 case. So we expect it to take time in the order of n squared instead of n. But it should happen. And that's exactly what happens. It takes time in that order and the perfect packings are found. So I wish I had a proof of that, but uh, I don't. I just wanted to show the numbers because they're pretty and that's it. I'm done.